Hi, and welcome to a lesson on the radio frequency spectrum. Here's a preview of this lesson. In a previous lesson, I gave you an overview of the electromagnetic spectrum and an introduction to the radio portion of the spectrum. In this lesson, we'll focus in more detail on the radio portion of the spectrum. Just as the EM spectrum is divided into wave bands, so too is the radio wave band divided into wave bands. I'll show you some common schemes for labeling these wave bands, and I'll show you some common uses for these wave bands. Finally, I'll wrap up by giving you a brief introduction to propagation characteristics and how they vary with frequency. As a reminder, here's a diagram that shows the entire EM spectrum. At the bottom, highlighted in yellow, is the portion that we refer to as the radio frequency spectrum. Generally, when we talk about radio, we're referring to frequencies below about 300 gigahertz and wavelengths longer than about one millimeter in free space. However, as we'll soon see, most of the action happens below about 100 gigahertz or so, and most of the trouble in terms of spectrum management happens below about 30 gigahertz or so. So, just as we divide the EM spectrum into bands, we divide the radio band into smaller bands. There are a number of ways to do this, and I'm going to show you two popular schemes. The table I'm showing you now divides the radio spectrum into bands over which the frequency varies by a factor of 10. So for example, EHF, the top row of this table, means extremely high frequency and refers to frequencies from 30 gigahertz up to 10 times 30 gigahertz, that is 300 gigahertz. That corresponds to wavelengths of uh, 10 millimeters down to one millimeter. Note that the total bandwidth of the EHF band is 270 gigahertz, that is 300 minus 30 gigahertz. Examples of what the EHF band are used for include, for example, 60 gigahertz wireless local area networking and certain types of point-to-point -point data links. Note that I've listed only applications requiring transmission. In particular, I've not listed scientific uses of these bands. Rest assured that scientific uses exist for every one of these bands. Moving down the table, the next band is SHF, which stands for super high frequency. Now, obviously these names, EHF, SHF, they're subjective and they're somewhat arbitrary. So don't try to read anything into the words extremely high or super high. Uh, as far as we're concerned, these are just names. SHF refers to frequencies from 3 gigahertz up to 10 times 3 gigahertz, that is 30 gigahertz. That corresponds to wavelengths of 10 centimeters down to 1 centimeter. Note that the total bandwidth of the SHF band is 27 gigahertz, so we have one-tenth the bandwidth available at SHF as we do at EHF. Examples of what SHF is used for include, again, point-to-point -point data links, but also this is where a lot of radars operate. Next we have UHF, which stands for ultra high frequency. UHF refers to frequencies from 30 megahertz up to 10 times 30 megahertz, that is three gigahertz. That corresponds to wavelengths one meter down to 10 centimeters. Note that the total bandwidth of the UHF band is 2.7 gigahertz. So we have one tenth the bandwidth available at SHF and one one hundredth the bandwidth available at EHF. UHF is home to most modern radio communications that you are familiar with, including TV broadcasting, cellular phones, many wireless LAN technologies, and so on. VHF stands for very high frequency. Again, note that the band naming scheme is not very imaginative and do not try to read too much into these names. VHF refers to frequencies from 30 megahertz up to 10 times 30 megahertz, that is 300 megahertz. That corresponds to wavelengths from 10 meters down to one meter. Note that the total bandwidth of the VHF band is 270 megahertz. So once again, we have one tenth the bandwidth available at the next higher band, that is UHF. Also, now you should be seeing a trend. As we go to lower and lower bands, we have less and less total bandwidth available per band. 
VHF is home to FM audio and some TV broadcasting, and is also home to a lot of LMR, that is, land mobile radio. LMR is essentially communications using handheld push-to-talk radios, the kind of thing that police departments and fire departments use. HF stands for high frequency and refers to frequencies from 3 megahertz up to 10 times 3 megahertz, namely 30 megahertz. So 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz. That corresponds to wavelengths from 100 meters down to 10 meters. The total bandwidth of the HF band is 27 megahertz. So the entire HF band comprises just a tiny fraction of what is available in higher frequency bands. In some of the higher frequency bands, the bandwidth of just one signal might be greater than the bandwidth of all of HF. HF facilitates very long-range communications, as we'll see a bit later. So, HF is commonly used for communications which have to span great distances. Other bands include MF, LF, and VLF. These are all at frequencies below 3 MHz. I'm not going to comment further on these because these bands have very specialized applications and the radio astronomical uses of these bands is extremely limited. One final thing I should mention on this table is that frequencies between 300 megahertz or so and 300 gigahertz, that is UHF through EHF, are commonly referred to as microwave frequencies. Again, you shouldn't read too much into that term, other than the fact that it's a label for radio bands which have wavelength less than about one meter or so. Appearing at the bottom of the slide now is a different scheme for partitioning frequencies in the radio spectrum. In this scheme, bands receive a designation consisting of one or two letters. This scheme is primarily used for higher frequencies, so the lowest frequency band for which this scheme is commonly used is called L, or L band, and is generally considered to be 1 to 2 gigahertz. Moving up from L, we have S, C, X, KU, K, KA, V, and W. The top end of the W band gets us up to 110 gigahertz. Once again, there's no meaning in the letters used here other than as a label for the frequency range. Fair question now is what bands are used by radio astronomy? Well, a fair response is that there's astrophysical information available in every band. However, only frequencies above about 3 megahertz or so can be accessed from the ground. Below that, the Earth's ionosphere effectively becomes opaque to radio frequencies, and to be honest, Frequencies below 100 MHz or so, or in some applications below 300 MHz or so, are difficult to use because of the ionosphere. A similar problem occurs beginning in the SHF band and higher, where certain frequencies are blocked by phenomena such as atmospheric absorption, absorption of energy due to the material that comprises the atmosphere. To summarize, Radio astronomy uses all the frequencies that allow radiation to pass from space to the ground through the Earth's ionosphere and atmosphere. And, to be clear, radio astronomy can also be done from space, where those limitations do not apply. Now I'd like to say a bit about the propagation characteristics in the radio spectrum. For this, it's convenient to think in terms of yet another way to divide the radio spectrum. The division I have in mind is below 30 megahertz, 30 megahertz to 6 gigahertz, and above 6 gigahertz. Let's start with 30 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. This corresponds to free space wavelengths from 10 meters down to 5 centimeters. Now, we have not yet defined the concept of path loss. However, if you already know something about this concept, you know that path loss in this range of frequencies is moderate and we can get away with using antennas that have convenient sizes. In particular, we can get away with using antennas that fit within or can be easily attached to an electronic device. This is also a band where we have good penetration into buildings. And because the wavelengths are comparable to the size of objects, we have plenty of scattering, and the chances of seeing a radio shadow or being limited by shadowing 
in this range of frequencies is pretty low. So all of this is very good for modern radio communications, including cell phones, Wi-Fi, and so on. Once we go above 6 gigahertz, we start running into some challenges. These include reduced scattering, so radio shadowing becomes pronounced, and we start to see absorption of power by the atmosphere, an effect such as rain fade. Path loss is increased, and we end up needing to use antennas which are larger and more complicated, such as antenna arrays. Penetration into buildings is also worse. Historically, these issues were enough to deter communication systems developers from using these frequencies. However, this is no longer the case, and for two reasons. First, we're simply running out of bandwidth in the 30 megahertz to 6 gigahertz regime. So, there really is little choice but to start looking at frequencies above 6 gigahertz. Secondly, antenna technology, and in particular array technology, has advanced considerably in recent years. So it's becoming easier and cost effective to implement the kind of antenna systems that we need to communicate in this frequency regime. Finally, let me talk about frequencies below 30 megahertz. The most remarkable thing about this band is that path loss is very low and, as I'm showing in this figure, the ionosphere acts like a reflector. This allows global communications with very low transmit power. The same phenomenon makes it relatively difficult to do ground-based radio astronomy at these frequencies. Other than long-range communications, frequencies below 30 MHz are not so great for communications purposes. The biggest single problem in this frequency range is that the whole band is only tens of MHz wide, and that's a tiny amount of bandwidth. So, let's wrap up with a quick review. The radio band is commonly defined to be frequencies below 30 GHz, and we're talking about wavelengths from about one millimeter up to hundreds of meters. I showed you two common schemes for labeling the radio wave bands. I also mentioned some common uses of these bands. Finally, I gave you a high-level description of the properties of radio propagation. Hopefully from that description you can see that 30 MHz up to 6 GHz will get a lot of attention in future lessons, and that frequencies above 6 GHz will also receive some attention. On the other hand, we'll probably not have much more to say about bands below about 30 MHz. That concludes this lesson on the radio frequency spectrum. Thanks for listening.